All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Code Like a Pro. Today we're going to be diving into the Liskov substitution principle, our third or fourth <laughs> video on the solid principles as we're working our way through. And uh, this one's a little bit of a doozy, <laughs> if uh, for lack of a, a better word. So uh, I'm going to give you the very computer science heavy. And if, you ever, if you've ever um, gone in pursued a bachelor's in computer science or really looked into the fundamentals of it, this wording will seem very similar because a lot of these principles are worded in such a way. Um, the idea from that stance is if S is a subtype of T, then objects of T may be replaced with objects of S without altering, altering any of the desirable properties of the program. So uh, this reminds me of college quite a bit, um, uh, and it's it's a little bit confusing, right? It's even for people who write software professionally. There's probably a better way of explaining the concept that uh, we can do that. So what does this actually mean? Well, um, what it essentially means is that subtypes should retain the behavior of the main type. Now we're talking about inheritance. Uh, you know, and the easy way of putting that is children should be like their parents for what they inherit. You know, if you are overriding the properties of the parent, then probably what should happen is you might want to rethink how you are abstracting your code and how you are inheriting your code and the, the structure of that because you might have something wrong because it may not be a child, right? And a basic example is if I'm a human, April is a human, and that is our type, and we have children, and it's a duck, something went wrong, <laughs> because we should not be able to have a duck. You know, it could still have a name property, it could still have an age, right? But it definitely should not be a duck, uh, it should probably be a, a human child. No, it definitely should be a human child, and we have to rethink it. So, um, the common thing that happens is, you know, that, that's what that actually means, and you know, the way that most people explain this to you is that if you cannot substitute a child class for its parent class and your code still be functional, then that means that you broke something that that class is inheriting because all your child class is doing is, is should be extending the behavior. It should not be altering the behavior of a parent class, right? And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into an implementation of this because it's a little, a little computer science heavy, but um, you know, we'll, we'll give a, a good example. Hey guys, I wanna take a moment to recommend Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp to you. Dev Mountain's been a long-term sponsor of mine. I appreciate their support as I've help grown the channel and tell everyone about their great facilities. I've actually been to their Provo, Utah campus and it's beautiful. So if you're interested in a full stack JavaScript bootcamp, they provide housing alongside the tuition so you can get up and go today. They're one of the most affordable bootcamps in the world, in the States. And I highly suggest you check them out at devmountain.com. As with all things software, Stack Overflow had an ex excellent example I think that really hammers the Liskov substitution principle down. So let's take a look at the code here. We are, have a rectangle class. A rectangle has a height and a width. They are independent of one another, right? The height can be any value and the width can be any value. Any positive value, I should say. Um, and when we set the height with a method and we set the width, all it's doing is setting the height and the width. Now. Uh, one thing that people suffer with and one thing that people get wrong about object-oriented programming is they oftentimes say that it models real life. That is a fallacy. That is somebody who wants it to make sense. But you are building, you are taking the abstract and making it concrete. You're not taking the concrete and making it abstract is how I kind of think of it. And although there are similarities, is not always the case when it comes to code. And this is a great example is why. So we have our rectangle class and our square class as well, which extends rectangle, it inherits from it. It is a child of our square of our rectangle class. And the issue here is, is when dealing with a square 
and a perfect square, your height and width are going to be the same thing. And you'll see here, we set the height, it's gonna set the height and the width. We set the width, it's gonna set the width and the height. And now, what ends up happening is anywhere we actually want to use this rectangle class, we are going to, if we were to swap the child with the parent, it no longer would be an accurate representation of what it is we're trying to accomplish. And because the parent class here cannot be substituted, although a rectangle it can still be a perfect square, it defeats all other rectangles, right? It's not that it's impractical, it's not that it doesn't really from a logical standpoint make sense that, hey, let's extend rectangle for our square because you know it is that is makes sense mathematically but the practicality of it is is that's going to break the substitution principle and cause issues down the road because we should be able based off the principle pass in the child for the parent without any additional setbacks so how might we how might we solve this issue if we wanted to extend rectangle well the the honest answer is one you could remove it entirely which we could do here the other answer is we could maybe reorganize our code so that we have a shape class and so perhaps we would and this is just me sort of free on it but perhaps we would create a new file called shape we're going to export class shape and in here, we might have a public type. We can go ahead and um, make that a string. And that would maybe be enough. If we wanted some similarities, probably not what I would prefer to do. But perhaps all shapes will have a height and a width. And in here, this will also be a number. Oops. And from this, we'll have rectangle. We got that out. That extends shape. And we will have square that extends oops, shape. And now we have a class that if we were to swap it in and out, it'd be fine. Now granted, it's a very basic class and uh, we don't even need type in its current iteration. But here, if we were to swap either one for the parent class, we shouldn't have any issue, right? We're not gonna overwrite. Height and width are still gonna be numbers. Uh, take out the type. And that's all we're really checking for here. There aren't gonna be any side effects. But in our previous example, we would have just fine by extending upon a rectangle because we can't substitute for them, hence the substitution principle. Uh, the Liskov substitution principle is one of the harder ones, in my opinion, um, because you, you almost have to be, you have to have very real wor world working examples before you sort of run into this issue. Um, but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope this helped clear it up just a little bit. And don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Check out my courses in the description below. See you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course. Get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.